you ever been in an uncomfortable situation where someone has violated your personal space? For people in other cultures, that might not have been too awkward for them. Proxemics, or the study of personal space, plays a very large role in human communication. I've learned a lot about this study through doing research and reading many articles. Today, we're going to go over some interesting points that I found, such as how proxemics plays such a major role in nonverbal communication, how it varies between different situations and relationships, and how it varies between culture. Let's begin by going over how proxemics plays a part in human communication. Whether you realize it or not, you're always engaging in proxemics. Each individual in a conversation or social interaction establishes their own social boundaries. These boundaries can shift depending on change in situation, and violations of these boundaries can cause a negative reaction. Proxemics ties into many other forms of nonverbal communication, such as body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice. Your normal proxemic zones range from the intimate zone, which is used for embracing or whispering, the personal zone for conversation among close friends, the social zone for conversation among acquaintances, and the public zone for public speaking. Here you can see a visualization of these zones. Now that we've talked about what proxemics is and how it plays a factor in human communication, let's move on to how it can change between different situations and relationships. Proxemics is a very fluid type of nonverbal communication, meaning that it's always changing and can change depending on the situation or your relationship. With a close friend, you're going to have a more close space between you when you're speaking. Whereas if it's someone you don't know as well, you're going to want them to be farther away. Or if the situation changes, such as a member of the conversation leaves or another person joins, your space might alter. Violations to these zones can also have different reactions. You might need to violate these zones sometimes in order to convey a serious tone by getting closer to someone. Finally, let's move on to how zones can change according to culture. Cultures have different rules regarding proxemic zones. For example, in Latin America, people tend to speak closer than they would in the United States. Generally, a more individualistic culture relies on larger zones to be more open, whereas a more collectivist culture is okay with having closer zones. Different cultures also vary on how they react to violations and deviations of these zones. Typically, people with nor normal larger zones will have a stronger reaction or be more aggressive when their personal space is violated, whereas people that are used to having smaller personal space will be more passive. Culture is always an important factor to take into account when considering all types of nonverbal communication. In conclusion, proxemics plays a major role in all human interaction and communication, whether you realize it or not, depending on situation, relationships, and culture. I hope I've helped you learn a bit more about a part of communication that you might not often think about.